My name is Jacqueline Morosi. Most people call me Jax. I teach American Sign Language here, level one through four, as well as a signing professions class, hoping to eventually have a whole deaf studies program here. This lecture that I am about to present has been um, in high demand, so I have documented it here today um, to make available for people who would like to view it. So I'm going to first introduce myself, and uh, more than I already have, and then we will actually go into the Signing Babies lecture. Um, I'm a, um, I graduated from Western Oregon University. I have a bachelor's degree in ASL English Interpretation. Um, I'm also a nationally certified interpreter through the Registry of Interpreters for the Deaf. I've been teaching since 2005, but I've been working at NIC since 2003. Um, I have a huge passion for the deaf community, for teaching sign language, um, and uh, parents that are interested in teaching their children sign language is something I uh, very much support as well, which is the reason I've done this lecture so many times. So I now give you signing babies. Okay, so this slideshow is available on ANGEL for those who are students, as well as the links, the resources, um, the dictionary, both from Kinder Signs and one that I had um, adapted a bit. But this is the, the main lecture that I have utilized. Before every Signing Babies presentation, I find it absolutely necessary to present some quick deaf facts about deaf people in America and about American Sign Language. I see this as uh, a necessity to respect the deaf community because it's their language that hearing parents are borrowing um, to, to use for their hearing children. So that's what I say in this slide here. This information should be reviewed to students. So um, if your students, especially if you are a advanced level student, most likely you already know this information. Um, and if you're not a student, then this might rock your world a little bit, I hope. So, um, quick deaf facts. Deaf people are often misunderstood because of common public mis misconception. Trust me, I know I've had the same misconceptions. Here are some quick deaf facts to correct possible fallacies and to add food for thought. 90% of deaf children are born into hearing families. Only 10%, one out of 10, uh, children are, of deaf children are born into deaf families. That means the majority of the time, children are born into families that don't naturally use their own language, their natural language, sign language. So that's the reason when you see a lot of different variations of what it means to be deaf amongst children um, is because of, of this fact that the majority of them are born into uh, the hearing world. Deaf people have created a language known as American Sign Language, which has been linguistically defined as a separate language such as English, French, and German. It's, it's a common mis misconception for people to think that sign language is just visual English and that it follows English word order and that everything that English says is what is signed. They do have a code that follows that line of, of thought, but that's not language uh, in and of itself. American Sign Language is actually more like Japanese than it is like English as far as the word order goes as well as some of the uh, active versus passive language uses and things like that. So American Sign Language has been studied and has found that while they do borrow certain aspects of English, it's actually very, very different from English. And it has been linguistically proven to be a complete language. 
ASL is the third most widely used language in the United States. Depending on where you find the statistics, sometimes they'll say it's the fourth most common. I've seen it say the fifth, and I've seen that it's nearly the second. Of course, the second being Spanish. I would, I would say that it's probably the third is, is most likely. Um, the reason for the variation is, is um, how sometimes people like me that are hearing that will use American Sign Language on a daily basis but don't use that as their main form of communication. Are they considered, you know, uh, people that would use this language um, as their primary language? Things like that, as well as because there are these other codes of English that are sign language, does that count as ASL? That's why there's a variation um, amongst that um, statistic. But it is true that uh, American Sign Language is used a lot in America. Um, and it's something that once people start to learn, start to see everywhere they go. Only 30% of speech, of English speech, is visible on the lips. This means that at best, a deaf person reading lips can only get 30%, 30, 30% of the conversation. That is not very much. To be missing 70% of a conversation, most of us, if you right now are watching this and you're distracted because a child is coming and talking with you or there's noise in the background or something, most likely you'll zone out if not turn this whole video off. Um, and a deaf person that's only getting 30% of communication, it's, it's hardly worth doing. Um, however, you'll meet a lot of, of people, of deaf people, hard of hearing people that say that they read lips really well. Actually, what they mean is they're really good at what they call closure skills, which means that they're really good at putting into context what was just said, what's going to be said, um, and putting it all together in addition to body language, uh, if they have some kind of residual hearing, putting that to use. Sometimes deaf people, hard of hearing people can hear women better than men or men better than women, different tones, um, as well as how open or, or enclosed is, a, is the room where the person is talking. A lot of different variables there. So if a person is really good at putting all the pieces together themselves, they'll say, I'm really good at lip reading. Um, or if they're just really good at faking it. But the actual act of lip reading is, is not an effective way to communicate on its own. ASL is used in the United States and Canada only. It is not a universal language. Every country, and sometimes even within the same countries, there are different signed languages. So that means when if I go to Mexico, they actually use Mexican sign language there. There's French sign language, there's British sign language, Australian sign language. Even these countries that speak English, like Australia and England, use different signed languages. Sometimes people will react that, to that by saying, well, there should be. There should be a universal sign language. Um, and that would really be the same as saying that there should be a universal spoken language. This, it's the same comparison. It's just not how natural language is born. Natural language is born when a community gets together and there needs to be a common way to communicate. And so there are these rules that are formed within that group, within that culture. They're adopted and then it becomes normal. It becomes the norm. And so in the United States, American Sign Language, and in Canada, American Sign Language is what is used. But sign languages around the world are all different. ASL versus baby sign language. It is important to understand that teaching your baby or your child some signs does not make your child fluent in American Sign Language. ASL is a complete language with its own grammatical and linguistic system. Babies and children who are able to express their wants and their needs through sign language is just another good way to communicate, and that is all. Okay. You would be surprised at how often I've 
talk to people, I tell them what I do, and they'll say, oh, my, my daughter has taught their child how to sign, and it's so great that they have this second language and that they're fluent in American Sign Language. They're not fluent in American Sign Language. I went to Mexico and I could, you know, ask some really basic things, and I can say most food words, I'm not fluent in Spanish. Um, babies that are communicating, hearing babies that are communicating with hearing parents are just communicating, and they're doing that with utilizing a language that's already been created. So ASL is a vessel to communication. Most hearing babies that grow up, uh, they've been signing, they stop signing once they start speaking, which is fine to a lot of the hearing parents because the goal is speech. If the goal is not speech, that's not the primary goal, the goal is for the child to be bilingual, then they will be taught differently. And we'll go through that in a minute. But it's just important for uh, hearing parents, uh, hearing adults to realize that babies who know some sign language does not make their babies, that's not their first language, they're not fluent in American Sign Language. So why teach a baby sign language? Sign language gives babies and parents an effective way to communicate at an early age, reducing frustration for both and creating a special bond that's so important for healthy child development. So it's basically creating effective communication earlier is what that says and what that means. Babies who use sign language tend to speak sooner with larger vocabularies, they show an increase in IQ scores and engage in more sophisticated play. Pre-verbal signing has also been shown to reduce the frustration broadly within, associated with the terrible twos. We'll go into depth about this in a minute. All babies use their hands to communicate before they can speak, such as waving bye-bye or clapping Research shows that babies can learn to communicate using sign language as early as six months old, uh, well before their vocal capacity uh, has been formulated to, spoken, to use spoken words. So they're already communicating with gestures. Why not assign those gestures meaning? Then your child can actually start be making these, these linguistic connections earlier and then can communicate sooner.